Hi, I'm Debbie John. I'm with Kokanee Kid Fishing, where tackle and information get you into the game. We are going to show you today how we can kokanee. So when we start off, at the end of each season, all of our fish that we're planning on canning is freezer packed into, uh, we use a back master uh, vacuum sealer to uh, process all of our fish and put it in the freezer. And so now we took all of our fish out last night to defrost that we're going to can and we're preparing to get ready and can. Um, the other thing that we do is I pre-wash all of my jars. I use half pints because I don't like to waste anything. You can use pints if you choose to. Uh, a big thing is you want to make sure that you have no chips on your jars and obviously get them clean. So I have cleaned all these in my dishwasher last night. Uh, then I come over and I clean my sinks, I sanitize them, and prepare them to put the jars in. And I've already put a few jars in here. I get hot water going, so you want to get your jars warm, so when you put the fish in and they hit the canner, they don't crack. So we're going to get that going. Uh, the other thing that I do is I have a system. I get my jar lids out and I put them in some water which we're gonna put on the stove and we get those to start heating up as I'm getting in my canning process. So I put a little bit of water in the bottom of a pan and then I like to bury them in the pan so they're all stuck together when I get into actually canning. Another tool that's nice and you can get these at any store in the canning section, it's a little magnetized uh, lid puller. So when you are canning, you can just pull that up with that little lid puller and it makes the process a lot simpler. Another thing that I like to do is I lay towels out because I want to make sure that I'm in a clean environment and everything stays nice and neat. So I lay a towel out where I'm going to do my canning and then I have a rag to wipe my hands as I'm canning because I'm going to get fish on my hands. And then I also have a rag to wipe the jar lids. So, and we'll show this later, but as you're putting the fish in, you're going to get particles on the top. You need to wipe that, otherwise the lid will not seal to the jar. Another tool that I have is a jar puller. You use this to pull the jars out, and I'll show you that later when we're canning, but you have a jar puller. So right now, I've got my hot water going on my jars, and I've filled up my sink. And um, we also will put our rings in here once I get all these jars full, but I just get every jar underwater so they start heating. And I do all this in advance, so once I get my kokanee out and in my bowl, I'm ready to go. So I everything's a step-by-step -step process, and this is the step I'm at right now. Okay, so now I've got my jars in the warm water, and they're all completely covered and I threw my lids in on top, so everything's ready here. Uh, and now we're gonna go over and we're gonna look at the lids inside of the pan. Okay, so I've also put my lids in the pan and we're gonna go ahead and turn that on to just a simmer because all we're wanting to do is heat them up so they're gonna take a good seal when I put them on the jar and screw the lid down. So those are gonna start heating up and now we'll go over and put water in the okay, canner. So now what I'm going to do is put water in the canner and get that started on the stove. I've already put one quart in. I'm going to put my second quart in. This can be warm or cold water. The idea here is that you're going to also get this going at a simmer just to get it warm. So when the jars go in, you're not putting warm jars in cold water or vice versa. And it's just to kind of keep everything going. So that's going to start simmering. And now what we're going to do is go start getting our kokanee prepared in the bowl so we can start working and putting everything into the jars. Okay, so here's a bag of our defrosted fish that we defrosted last night. And what Jeremy does is when we're up the lake fishing, we kind of determine based on the fish quantity that we have at home, what we're gonna do with it. So he takes and fillets, skins and fillets all the fish uh, and prepares them and we put them in a larger bag to freeze so we can, at the end of the season, do the can. We're a little late this year, but uh, we're doing it right now. So I'm gonna go ahead, and I like to have everything ready to go. I'm gonna cut this bag open, and I just throw them into my bowl. And this is fish that's all ready to go. And my second bag. 
And so these, these have little pin bones in them, but once you can them, they will become soft and you won't even know that they're in there. Some people will not even fillet them and throw the whole fish with the, the bone in it, but we don't do that. So I like to leave a, like a little trickle of warm water for my finger washing as I go through. So we are going to start canning. I pick out a jar and then all I do is I pick out pieces and I kind of fold them in here until I filled the jar with kokanee just right up to this bottom rim. Here, you don't want to overfill it because then your jar will not seal. So that's a full jar. I rinse my fingers, dry it, take this rag, wipe the edge, or you can just use your finger and wipe the edge, and then wipe your finger on that. Come over, get a lid, set it on, make sure it's right on the edge of the jar, around the jar, and then tighten this down just to a, a you know, snug tight, and then set it inside the canner. And you can see that, and we just keep doing this until we fill them up. Here we go again, get us another jar, and I just fold these into the jar. Pretty simple. You can see I'm a little bit messy here, so that's why I like to have the towel. There you go. It's full right up to the rim. Wipe your finger around to get off any particles of fish that might be on there. Then grab yourself a lid out of your warm water bath. Set it right on the jar. Grab a ring out of the warm water. Just tighten it down, finger tight. And it goes right in the can. As you can see, Zoe and Bailey are over here in the kitchen. Very excited that we are canning kokanee to put on their dry dog food. They are part of our fishing crew, so they get part of the catch. Okay, so this is jar number eight. We have filled the bottom of the canner. Uh, so Jeremy's going to show you a shot of that before I put a stacking tray in. So we got eight jars in there, and then we place this stacking tray on top. And now we will put another eight jars and I'll end up with three layers in this canner and we'll have 24 jars of kokanee at the end of our first canner. So I'm adding a few more jars to my hot water to get them going and I just kind of rotate through uh, more rings as well. So uh, we'll get ready for our next layer. When I'm setting the second layer in, I offset them from the jars below. So I set them in between two jars. So my next jar, if I was gonna set one on the third level, I'll show you where I, I put that just like this on top of that jar. And you don't have to use these uh, spacing rings. These, you could actually, if you wanted to, stack the jars on top by offsetting them in just like I just showed you in the canner. So, but it is better to use the spacers because you don't want all your jars to tumble down inside the canner when it gets going. So I just always uh, use the spacers. Okay, so we're putting the last jar in on the second row. You can take a peek in there. And we're gonna put another stacker tray, but notice, so this is a canner that is a lot taller. This is a shorter canner. I can get three rows of jars times eight jars per row, so that's 24. And here I'm only gonna get two rows. So I can stack two rows, you know, one on the bottom and then have one stacker tray with another okay, row. So we have brought our canner outside because we are gonna do three canners today to get all of our fish processed. And so uh, we just moved it from the inside stove out to here. We've turned this on medium heat. Again, we are trying to get the steam to come out of this little steam hole. Once it has a steady steam coming out, we will put this lid on and then we'll have to back the heat down, which we'll show you and we'll get it at a consistent 10 and can this uh, canner of meat for 100 minutes. And now we're gonna go in and do a second canner. So you can see now where it's just kind of starting to steam on and off. We're waiting for a steady steam. So it's getting there. Um, we're gonna wait just a little bit longer. You know, and I gotta tell you while we're waiting for this, this is really fun. You know, it kind of brings memories back of our fishing trip as I'm going through these fish and canning and I come across these bigger kokanee and guess whose those are because I always catch the biggest fish. So just wanted to let you guys know, you kind of 
get to go back in time and remember your fishing trips and all those big fish that I caught. So see how it's steady and it's not stopping? We're gonna go ahead and put this cap on, which once it gets on and gets pressured, these are gonna pop, this little thing's gonna pop up. So watch that. And that's when that pressure starts building, that thing's gonna pop up and then it'll climb slowly. And that's when we're gonna start backing the heat down so we can keep it at 10. If we leave that heat up where it is right now, as this thing pops, it's gonna go beyond that 10. So it's kind of just finessing that heat level just to get it right at 10. So it, it's getting close. See how that thing's like steaming up? It's gonna pop up here pretty soon and, and then we'll back it down, so. Okay, so we're almost at pressure 10 here. We're up to nine. And so we're leaving the heat at medium and and then we're gonna back it off here in a couple seconds. We just want it to reach that pressure 10 first. And then uh, we'll set a timer for 100 minutes. And Jeremy will have to continue to watch this cooker to make sure it stays at that 10 because it can jump pretty quickly. So you just gotta kinda adjust the heat as you go. And we'll show you as we do this. in this so these are our two grandmothers canners this one was Jeremy's and this one was my grandmother's and they were smart they got ones that you could put three levels in get more kokanee done this is right now four cases of kokanee when we're done so you can see this one's at pressure 10 and look at this look who's waiting patiently for the kokanee to get done even though it's cold out here uh, this one now we're gonna bring up and again get the steam to come out uh, of this steam cap and then we will put this little cap on you'll notice they're both different this one actually you screw it on after you put it on and we'll show you that a little bit later so both canners a little bit different but um, they're both great canners and we love using our grandma's canners so we've got both of these running at 10 and I've been having to adjust the temperature you can see on this one we went from medium all the way to low and it's just a fine tuning finessing of that temp because it had gotten up to 12. And so we just kind of backed it off a little bit to bring it back down to 10. And right now it's holding pretty steady. I had to, I went down below low and then I had to bring it back up too low to get it to stay steady. This one's being pretty consistent. What you'll notice is as they're starting to cook and get more done, it's a little more temperamental on raising and lowering of the heat so you just got to really keep an eye on these you don't want to get them too high of pressure uh, but yeah we're just kind of watching them as we go through this one has let's see another hour and 28 minutes left to go on it and this one of course is ahead of that so we'll be pulling this one first and we'll show you what we do when we pull them Okay, so this canner still has another 25 minutes to go, so we're letting that one continue. However, this one is done, so we're gonna turn the heat all the way off. And now what we want this thing to do is cool down, and we'll watch this go down to zero, and this'll pop down, uh, and so it'll be releasing the pressure. Once that happens, we'll make sure we'll kind of tilt, you know, tap this, and if any air comes out, we'll, we'll let it continue to release the pressure. Once all the pressure's gone, We'll take this off, remove the lid, um, we'll take it inside, and then we'll remove the lid and we'll start pulling the jars out. So that's what's next. And look, the girls are still patiently waiting out here in the cold, beautiful day. Okay, so you see it's down to zero. And when I put a little tilt on this, there's no steam coming out. Voila, it's done. So now we're gonna take it in and take the lid off and start pulling the jars out. And look, the dogs are ready to go in. Okay, so we're gonna remove the lid. I'm gonna do it just carefully so I make sure there's no pressure. And there's gonna be steam coming out, so I'm gonna remove it quickly after I get it. And I just flip the lid over because it's got hot water still. Set that down, let it cool. And you got your hot jars in here, so I got my little jar puller. I grab the mill jar first. Squeeze, and I'm just gonna set it right on these towels that I laid down earlier. 
and we'll just pull these jars out and you'll begin to hear them pop. And when they pop, they're sealing. So you want every jar to pop. And I'll show you later how to check to make sure each jar is sealed. Right now these are very hot and you do not want to touch them. For two reasons, the fact that they're hot, but also you can cause them not to seal by touching them early. So we're just setting each jar out to cool and then they will start popping. That was one popping and sealing. That popping is satisfaction to my ears because I know that they're working and it's really disappointing to the dog's ears because they want them to not pop so they can get a jar of kokanee tonight. They'll get one anyways, but. Notice all the oils that the kokanee has created on its own. Again, I have not added any liquid into the cans of kokanee. This is all oils from the kokanee itself. It's gonna be delicious kokanee. Okay, so the pressure has released. We're gonna remove this pressure cap and we'll release this slowly, twisting it. Ember steam's gonna come out. Do a quick little flip. Like that. All right, and here we go. We're gonna start pulling these jars of yummy canned kokanee. These cans are looking good and they're starting to pop. As soon as they hit cold air, they start popping, and that means they're sealing. Again, if they don't pop, they have not sealed, and you will need to eat it within probably a couple of days. Okay, so this is the first set of jars that we pulled, and if you can see, all the jars are indented. This one is not, it did not seal, and I can probably push and make it. Yeah, see how that's, that's a non-sealing jar, it's not gonna seal. All everything else that are sealed, and these are just now getting pulled. But it looks like all of these got sealed. That one's not popped in yet, but it probably will because it's still hot. Uh, looks like everything else is popped in. So this one did not seal. This one will be one that the dogs are going to be happy about. So I just want to say thank you for joining me today on how to cook canned kokanee. And I do want to say I do date each of my jars, so I rotate my stock. Please join us on our YouTube channel, Kokanee Kid Fishing, and also come buy tackle at kokaneekidfishing.com. Thank you.